Hey what's up guys, welcome to another truck history episode. On today's episode we will be looking at the history of Fargo trucks. Now let's get started. The Fargo Over the Globe logo was reflective of the fact that the vehicle was built as an export model to be sent all over the globe. The most common theory about where Fargo got its name is attributed to Mr. Joseph Fields, who was president of DeSoto and vice president of Chrysler sales division at the time. Fields had started his career in the automotive industry, selling farm machinery in Fargo, North Dakota. The Fargo name was made famous in the United States of America just after gold was discovered in early 1848 at Sutter's Mill near Coloma, California. People from all over the world flocked to California, drawn by the promise of huge profits and to seek their fame and fortune. Among them were Henry Wells from Vermont and New Yorker William G. Fargo, who went on to create the Wells Fargo Empire. Many people think the name for the Fargo truck came from here. Not so. Although the famous name did stir up nostalgia of Old West Adventure and reliable transportation assisting with marketing. Another theory is the word Fargo. It's a play on words, go far. The most common theory about where Fargo took its name from, the second time around is attributed to Mr. Joseph Fields, who was president of DeSoto and vice president of Chrysler's sales division at the time. Fields had started his career in the automotive industry, selling farm machinery in Fargo, North Dakota. Although it is unlikely the marketing advantages of using the Wells Fargo connection would hardly have escaped his keen business acumen. Regardless, the original Fargo was little more than a commercial version of the Plymouth passenger car. The Fargo Motor Car Company of Chicago was formed in 1913 and sold a line of Fargo trucks from up until 1922, when it closed down to financial difficulties. Very little is known about the company, except that in 1928 the name Fargo re-emerged as a truck range within the Chrysler organization when Chrysler created the Fargo Motor Corporation to build and sell commercial trucks, primarily for the export market. The Fargo was available as a small half-ton version called the Packet, which was built on the Plymouth chassis and was powered by a Q-series four-cylinder engine as used in the Plymouth Q. From March of 1929, the Packet was powered by a six-cylinder DeSoto engine. The second Fargo available initially was a three-quarter ton version called the Clipper, which was powered by a Chrysler 65 engine. In June of 1929, a one-ton version called the Freighter was also released. It too was powered by a DeSoto six-cylinder engine. With so many marks available within their own range, Fargo tended to be made up from whatever was available from other vehicles in the Chrysler stable including Plymouth, DeSoto, and even Chrysler themselves provided mechanical and sheet metal parts. The Fargo grew to a wide range of vehicles, including heavy dump trucks, light express, and delivery vehicles and semi-tractors. Unfortunately, Fargo was doomed from the start. Chrysler had been attempting to buy the Dodge Brothers company for a while. The deal came off around the same time as Fargo was released, creating the quandary of not only dealing with external competitors, but internal marks within their own organization. It now had three truck lines, Fargo, Dodge Brothers Light Trucks, and Graham Brothers Trucks, medium and heavy duty lines, which had been exclusively built and marketed by Dodge Brothers since 1921. Chrysler dropped the Graham Brothers marquee, giving his preference to the Dodge Brothers name, which was both recognizable and respected. All Graham Brothers trucks were immediately rebadged as Dodge and sold alongside the Fargo range. Fargo trucks for most other countries were made in the United States. From 1933 to 1935, 3,500 one and a half ton Fargo trucks were made in Detroit for export. Export Fargo trucks with special serial numbers, available in one and a half ton form only, started in 1933, making them easier to track. Following a period of low sales figures, production of Fargo trucks ceased at the end of 1930 after producing just 7,000 vehicles since their 1928 introduction. Fargo Motor Corporation had been in business for only two years. From 1938 to 1972, Fargo trucks were built and sold in Canada, and over the years, that gradually dwindled, until they too were virtually Dodges with Fargo nameplates. Import duties between countries of Commonwealth were considerably less than from other countries such as the USA, so subsequently, many big American companies built their factories over the border in Canada, enabling them to cash in on this financial advantage. Chrysler's car division had moved into Australia during the 1920s, but it was 1935 before this was formalized with 18 independent distribution agents forming Chrysler Dodge DeSoto distributors. This group used its combined strength to purchase and market Plymouth, Dodge, Fargo, and DeSoto vehicles. 
TJ Richards of Adelaide designed and fitted bodies to locally made Chrysler vehicles. Tobias John Richards had started in business by building horse-drawn wagons in 1885. His sons Clarence and Herbert joined him in 1915, and the business became TJ Richards & Sons. TJ Richards had been the main competitor for Holden's Body Builders since 1922, and in the 1937-38 selling season, beat Holden to the punch by producing Australia's first all-steel sedan body. The Chrysler Group acquired controlling shares in the TJ Richards in 1937. During World War II, the group, now called Richards Industries, manufactured aircraft components and munitions and didn't return to car production until war's end in 1945. The business remained Australian-owned until 1951, when the US Chrysler Corporation bought the controlling interest and renamed it Chrysler Australia Limited. The structure of the organization changed, as Chrysler's focus was to outsell Holden by producing a range of cars and light commercial vehicles with 90% local content. While this ambitious plan was being implemented, Chrysler continued assembling and partially manufacturing a range of 6-cylinder and 8-cylinder Royal and Dodge Phoenix vehicles. Fargo and DeSoto trucks continued to be produced in many parts of the world. Most Fargo trucks and bus chassis sold in Australia, India, and other countries in Europe and Asia. They were made in Chrysler's new UK plant. Most were also sold under the Dodge, Commer, or DeSoto names. Australian Fargos were built on a Dodge truck chassis and drivetrain. With the chassis and drivetrain shipped in from Canada in crates, the grills differed between the UK and Canadian models, but otherwise they were essentially the same. Fargos generally arrived in Australia in what was called CKD, completely knocked down, condition, and were reassembled in Australia by TJ Richards. The letters TJR will be stamped into one of the major panels of the Fargo if it was assembled by TJ Richards. The ID plate should also identify it as an Australian assembled model by having the cab listed as a TJR cab. There was also a government requirement that a high percentage of local content had to go into such vehicles, and TJR met that requirement employing the services of a whole range of South Australian businesses. In 1978, when Chrysler pulled out of its partnership with Askem of Turkey, leaving them with the rights to the Fargo name and brand, the Fargo e VIN code disappeared in 1987 to make way for the new Eagle brand. Askam lost the rights to sell Dodge trucks when the brand was brought back to Turkey by Daimler Chrysler, but they continued to use the Fargo and DeSoto names, although the company has no technical or corporate relationship with Chrysler. Askam went out of business in 2015. This means that the LGV Maxus van was the last Fargo under the vehicle Fargo Fora in the world. Although a Fargo was never anything but a Dodge with a different name, there was something that was different a uniqueness that is now gone and missed. So there you have Fargo truck history. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Before you leave, like the video, subscribe to our channel, click that notification bell, and comment below. What did you think of Fargo trucks? Need new parts for your rig? Check out our website, jackschromeshop.com, as we have a wide variety of products. And if you can't find what you need, give us a call and we'll help you find it. If you want to stay up to date on new content coming your way, or just discuss all things Chrome, tune into the Chrome Corner. Wednesdays at noon with our host, Dave Coleman. Thanks again, guys, for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, if your rig don't shine, you don't know Jack.